feeling lost and alone, looking for validation from your partner only to find the feeling of rejection and continued frustration, you're together yet so far apart. Now your frustration has turned into disdain and resentment. Your insecurities have begun to affect every aspect of your life. Ironically, you have now become the cold and detached one, shielding yourself from the uncertainties of your relationships. Dr. April Brown has created Bringing Intimacy Back, a series of discussions that are designed to help you reclaim what you have lost along the way. Dr. April will help you rediscover and reconnect to the intimate relationship your heart so desires. Go to www.bringingintimacyback.com today and let the healing begin. Hi, welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show where intimacy is real. On this show, we aim to help you increase the intimate connections with your significant other, children, family, business, work, community, career, and your higher power. We give you the secret power to intimacy to create a life you love or love the life you create. And so on today's show, our topic today is reinventing and discovering your new career with a passion for five tips of fulfilling a career makeover. It's so important in the sense of, I believe that we work more than we do anything else. And I'm one who had to recreate my own career. And so um, I am honored to have, um, not only is she a very talented, career therapist, but she's also a wonderful person, and she's also become a friend of mine that I've known for a few years. So I would like to, of course, welcome Seneca Williams. Welcome, Seneca. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, Dr. April. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. You look fabulous as always. Thank yes. you. <laughs> yes. Well, let me tell you a little bit about her. She's an online therapist and international professional coach with an online practice established since 2015. In 2009, she took a courageous leap of faith to change careers. So she was actually into law, and so she changed it to psychology. People told her it would be hard, impossible, because she's single, she's a single mother, she's just a three-year-old, but she overcame all that, you know? And she overcame anxiety, depression, and she was able to turn her career into establish online business that is profitable and that it's helpful and that it is today. And after 10 years of supporting hundreds of clients in behavioral health, she recognized a boom in what we call women entrepreneurs, because she's a fabulous entrepreneur. And she's identified many deal with a lot of us with business anxiety, what we do, what, you know, all this kind of stuff. So she has created in 2020, in this year, uh, a thing called Conquer Network. It's a premier membership network addressing entrepreneurship and emotional wellness. Seneca has, rec has realized the distinct connection between an entrepreneur's success to her emotional wellness, which is not always addressed in many traditional, you know, business coaching things. And as a mental health advocate, she volunteers her time to various mental health causes, and she also speaks and writes to promote mental health wellness for pro professionals and entrepreneurs. And today, first time ever that I've done on my show, she's actually going to help um, a young lady, and we're going to talk to her a little bit about her. Her name is Jaquila Rawls, and I'm going to talk a little bit about her in a little later. But she's going to, on today's show, help her so you guys can see how she can use her skills and talents to help you overcome many challenges. And for those people who are out there who want to be a successful entrepreneur. So welcome. Thank you so much. That was a great introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So that was just a little bit about your background. And um, we have similar backgrounds in the sense of um, going from one career to the next. But tell me, um, first thing, tell me how, because we're also in this um, COVID-19 and everything going on in your life right now, how are you doing? That is one of those questions that is so loaded these days because of all the things going on, not only dealing with COVID, but also being a therapist in this time, as you know, yes. uh, it, it has been interesting and very challenging dealing with going through things with your clients at the same time. Right. 
So I tell people while your clients were going out looking for toilet paper, you were also doing the same things at the same time. Right. So that has been challenging in itself. And then right now what's going on in the environment, um, you know, with the unrest, the social unrest and the protests, right. also navigating and, and dealing with that also with clients at the same time. So it has been challenging um, personally in my own life, you know, just been trying to balance because there's been a lot of burnout. I've had an influx of referrals more than I've ever had in my time practicing mm. health and dealing with family members and homeschooling. Right. Um, my daughter's the last year of eighth grade, so just trying to make sure she finishes and graduates. And then, you know, personally, I have lost some family members. Mm. I lost a family member two weeks ago and then one last night. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, so thank you so much for being here. But yeah, that is very challenging um, to how, and like you said, to get so overwhelmed. And even as an entrepreneur, because <laughs> we have to work, work, work. Yes, yes, yeah. How are you making sure that um, self-care? So I've adjusted my schedule. Um, okay. It's very important that people know that whatever you were doing pre-COVID, um, maybe you can't manage that same schedule now. So you have to adjust that schedule. So I have been managing my schedule by, you know, either starting my days later. So okay. I have my first client at the same time or ending my day earlier. And then also making sure I have blocks of time in between my, my morning sessions and my evening sessions that I have a block in between for rest. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's important. Definitely. Yes. And it's, it's very challenging with so much stuff going on right now with grief all over the place. Yes. Yes. So I'll be definitely praying for you and your family. Thank you. Yes. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. So, um, as an entrepreneur, why are you so passionate about um, career and helping people um, do things and change their careers and all that kind of stuff? That is a great question. And I thought about it from my perspective, why it was so important to me personally, and then why it would be so important for others to then, you know, approach it. Mm -hmm to find their career and, and, and find a business. For me personally, it was important for me to find a career that was fulfilling to me because okay. I noticed when I was going to work, I felt burnt out. I would feel sad. I felt unmotivated. I would even feel depressed when I was going into jobs that I didn't like. And I had this desire inside of me. I remember my 20s were like this, extremely difficult time because I was like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? And I don't know, some people can just go to a job and they're like, oh, just get a paycheck. But I needed more than, than that. I needed to love what I was doing. I needed to enjoy it. I needed to be happy on Monday morning. Right. That was important to me. I needed to love Mondays. So when I think about what that was going on psychologically, you might have heard of, um, you know, this is for the listeners, you might have heard of the hierarchy of needs, Maslow's mm -hmm. hierarchy of needs. So as you know, Dr. April, we have this pyramid, maybe people have seen it, where we have levels of things that are important to us. Okay. So at the very bottom, you know, it's our physiological needs, our food, clothing, shelter, then our safety, right. love and belonging. As we go up, we get to self-actualization, right? That is when we find the things that make us fulfilled. So on that hierarchy of needs, I wanted to go to the top. It wasn't enough for me to just get a paycheck or okay. just be okay. I wanted to reach my highest potential. Okay, and yes. That's what many people want, and that's what I want to help them do. Okay, yes. And tell us a little bit about Conquer Network. So the Conquer Network was an idea that came from working with client after client after client. And I realized I'm answering the same questions and I'm, I'm helping them work through the same feelings. Many of okay. them were dealing with business anxiety. And mm -hmm. business anxiety, anxiety, as people know, is like you have excessive worry about something. Right. You like something is out of your control. You have a hard time with uncertainty. Or maybe physically you feel nervous. You might notice your heart beating faster mm -hmm. and all these things. I realized some people only experienced that when they were working on their business. 
Mm, okay. Sense of avoidance. They would go into excessive worry about, am I going to mess up? Am I going to make a mistake? And right. put their careers, right? They wouldn't change jobs. They wouldn't apply for different things, get that promotion, go for that, you know, um, opportunity to be the manager because they were dealing with anxiety around like that level up. Right. So the, the network is really group coaching monthly. I mean, not monthly, weekly group coaching in a monthly membership so they can pay in every month to be a part of this network where they're going to not only have group coaching with me, but also bring in other experts to help them with other areas of their lifestyle. Because as you know, Dr. April, if you have issues in your relationship, it's going to affect your career. It's going to affect your business. So it's bringing in people into the network that can talk to them about Hey, you know, this area of your life, motherhood, relationships, mm-hmm. um, how do you go ahead and brand yourself? All these things. Um, so monthly they can pay into that and then learn all of these skills and work on their emotions and their entrepreneurship. Awesome. Yes. And that is exactly what's needed, especially um, in today's world um, with COVID, with Black Lives Movement, a lot of um, entrepreneurs, especially um, minority-based Um, entrepreneurs and if you're a mom you know we have so much stress going on right now as you know so yes yeah yeah so having that support system especially like you said um, because the young lady we're going to talk to I believe is is um, of course younger than me in in the maybe 20s or 30s yeah the struggles that we have and just trying to get something off the ground or even once something's off the ground um, a business is like, I think it's like a baby. Yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So it requires a lot of nurturing, but you also need support. So I um, applaud you and thank you so much about um, creating that out there for our um, listeners or for people who are wanting to. And we'll have more about that as you talk a little bit more about that. Um, but what is the first step in thinking about a new career? The first step is usually not what people think about, but the first step is why. I usually ask people, why do you want to change your career? Why do you want this career? Like I ask them why. Sometimes people are just like, I don't like my job. I don't get along with my coworkers. So I I actually go a step further than a traditional uh, career coach. And I look for the emotional reasons behind why they want that new career. That is what's going to keep you going. If you have a really solid and strong why you want to change careers or why you want that career, it's going to be like a strong foundation to build on. So you have to be very clear and have clarity about this. If you don't know why you're doing something, it's going to fall apart when the challenges come or when you get confused or when you get frustrated. Okay, wonderful. Yes. And so um, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we have a young lady. Um, coming on and she is looking at a career choice and definitely the most important part like you said is like the why so we're going to talk about that and understand her background and if you can provide some resources for her that would be great we're going to take a short break but when we come back um, we're going to get into the meat and bones and help out this young lady as much as possible during this difficult time that we are all facing many people are in need of someone to talk to One option is speaking to a therapist to express your anxieties if you're feeling isolated or just need someone that will listen and help you with coping skills to get through. Dr. April Brown is now accepting new clients and is working with her existing clients through distance video counseling. The services are through a secure online HIPAA web-based practice management platform called Simple Practice. This technology can provide a secure two-way interactive video counseling session over the internet. For more information about video counseling, please email Dr. April Brown at info at draprilbrown.com or you may call 239-565-6921. Thank you. And remember... We are all in this together. Jaquila, are you still there? Yes, I'm still. Yes, 
Okay, yes, okay. All right, so yes. Can you share with us um, a little bit about yourself? Um, like you said, I was born and raised in Fort Myers. Um, been here all my life, basically, unfortunately. Um, as of recently, I'm kind of having a struggle with career choices and whatnot. Um, I found this opportunity a coincidence because I was just minding my business and um, having a hard time picking from different careers in and out, back and forth. And then this came up. And I also would like to give a shout out to Foshan Parker for making okay. this happen, have a heart of gold and everything, and uh, for bringing me closer to you guys to get the help that I need. Okay, what question do you have for a career expert? Um, I'm kind of struggling with that right now. Um, I just recently left um, skincare, so now I'm kind of just kind of figuring out what direction to go from here. So. I have definitely been there, and I'm, I want to make sure I'm saying your name right, Jaquila. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, I have definitely been there. Um, sometimes I work with clients that are your age, and I wish I could go back in time and tell my 22 year old self, like, you're going to be all right. It's going to be fine. You know, it's very important that you understand career development may not be what we were taught in school. We were mm -hmm. taught in school and conditioned to believe that you need to know what you're going to be when you grow up for the rest of your life. And you make that right. decision before you're 18. I do not agree with that school of thinking that you need to know exactly what you want to do with your whole life by 18. But you definitely mm -hmm. need to know what your values are, what kind of lifestyle you want to live. Um, you, you sound like you would like to leave New York. I, I read a little bit about you. You like to be able to travel and move around and see different things. So all of these things are factored into your career development, as well as what you learn from your upbringing in your environment, what you learn from your family about career development. So all of these things come into play when you are developing your career. Traditionally, people tell you you have to know what your skills are or your personality and then match it to a job. Mm -hmm. So go and they give you these assessments. People might be familiar with the Myers-Briggs assessment. Are you familiar with people doing these career assessments, Jaquila? I've never even heard of it. Okay. All right. <laughs> people give you these tests. Dr. April probably knows what I'm talking about. They give you these tests, you know, and they say, do these tests. And once you finish the test, it'll tell you what you should be. Oh, is it like a personality test or something like something like that? Personality test, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're wrong. <laughs> you know, is it doesn't factor in who you are, Jaquila. Um, mm -hmm. your, your the cultural components, what it means to be a woman, all these different things. Maybe your current financial si situation, socioeconomic status. So the important thing is going back to what I said earlier was why do you want to change careers or why do you want to choose a career is very important. Thinking about why I want to do that. So just curious, you recently were pursuing a certain track, right? With mm -hmm. sounds like makeup or skincare. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've changed your mind about that. What made you change your mind? Well, ever since I got this full-time job, I was thinking, well, I'm not on my feet at the moment. And every time I think about academics, I get exhausted. So I've been moving from institu institutions and stuff like that, back and forth, um, three different occasions where I, I went through three different colleges. So I found that to be pretty draining. And um, like you said, um, the career choices, I don't like to go into work feeling like I'm just there for a paycheck or um, just to meet friends alone and things like that. Or if I'm miserable, you know, I don't like certain bodies, some stuff like that. I wanted to go into a career that I'm actually enjoy doing, um, that I'm gonna be able to have stability in it, and um, something I can reflect on that you know I can share with other people. Okay. So good experiences and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You will be drained if you don't have clarity about what it is that you're doing. Just right. Why did you choose that track, um, makeup and skincare? Um. It's something I watch my mom do, take pictures. Um, but I've had a variety of different things that I love that I was actually going to school for, um, you know, multiple different times. And I decided, no, nah, that, that wasn't going to be it. Um, psychology, psychology was one as well, mental counseling, um, makeup artist, photography. 
Um, it's just so many things to go through. Okay. And um, I'm just, I haven't found that passion yet, I don't think, that I realized. I think it's something that I enjoy doing on my free time, but not something that, you know, it screams my name, you know, per se. I totally understand. And I want to tell you this, Jay Kila, what you're saying about your career situation right now sounds very much like what I experienced in my early 20s. I changed colleges about three or four times. I changed mm -hmm. majors probably about four times. It was very, very emotional because I was like, why can't I just figure it out like some other people? But like you said, you saw someone in your family doing this, so you came up with that idea. What I know is for many people, when it comes to what they finally choose to do for their career, it really has always been with them. It's something that they don't even think about. It's so natural to them that they didn't think that they could turn that into a career. Mm -hmm. You mentioned psychology and mental health. Yes, that was just one of them that I went to school for. And I'm just like, you know, I'm hearing people talk about the experiences and stuff like that. And I kind of, I think that's the part of me that kind of just, you know, so as far as dealing with um, the aftermath, the toll, like you say, to try to balance and things like that. And I feel like I don't have that balance in my own life okay. to try to balance other people's lives out. So I'm thinking, why not try something different where I don't have to, you know, you know, mix those, intertwine those two together. Okay. Where you are at the, the time in life is important. As I said earlier, there's a hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. So if you are currently feeling like I'm not completely stable, it's going to be really hard to get to that top of that triangle right. of the hierarchy of needs. So you're right. It is important that you feel stable and secure with your basic needs. Those are met. But there's the other thing, um, and I wrote this down, learning theory of John Crumbo. Um, mm -hmm. It is a theory of career counseling that talks about happenstance. And many of us come to our career of choice by happenstance, by trying out different things we were interested in to realize that is not the thing for us. And that's okay. And sometimes we worry about what are other people going to think about me that I don't know. Right. It wasn't until I was 28 that I made that decision that I'm going to, you know, pursue mental health counseling. Before that, I wanted to be an attorney. And I made a lot of career decisions based on money, how much it pays, or based on what other people were telling me I should do, or what mm -hmm. I thought was the trends. And I wasn't aligned with who I was and what I really enjoy doing without even getting paid. What do you enjoy doing even if no one pays you? You just do it. I think makeup. <laughs> like I enjoy doing it, but um, like I said, with academics and things like that, not wanting to um, drain myself furthermore, I decided to just focus on full-time working until I get that stability. And if I decide to go back, then I'll go back or pursue something else along the way. Like I have biohazard cleanup. I know it's weird that I go from, you know, different ranges and levels and things like that. But that was one of my options as well which um, academically wouldn't take um, as much loan or put me in debt or anything. So that's a, another big factor why I kind of left the school thing alone for a little bit. Okay. There is nothing weird about it. We were conditioned to <laughs> that is weird, okay? <laughs> Time between me becoming uh, what I am today and figuring it out, I would say is about a 10 year window. I'm not saying it has to be a 10 year window for you. <laughs> it was a 10 year window for me. Mm -hmm. And I got a bachelor's degree in psychology in 2000 and I think one or two. And it was a big gap between getting a master's in 2012. So between that time, I wasn't pursuing psychology. In my mind, I thought, I don't really want to do that. It doesn't really pay. I don't think I want to do it. So it's actually okay to take a detour and do some exploration, exploratory. So the, the, the career counseling theories that I believe in are the ones that encourage exploration. Mm -hmm. And right now, what you need to be doing through the exploration is doing research. You might even talk to people in certain industry and do what I call informational interviews, where you just ask them, hey, what is it that you do? How do you do it? And people don't know that you can do that. You can contact someone on LinkedIn. 
or you someone in your network and just interview them about their career. Mm -hmm. This is a great time to do some exploration, especially during COVID. Things aren't up and running completely 100%. This is a great time to make yourself over. In 2008, when I made myself over, it was at the time of a recession in the U.S. So right now, what do you think are your challenges or limits in finding your career or making yourself over? Um, lack of support. Um, just from the time I was in high school to getting to college, the only thing I really knew about myself at the time was I had to be different from my family. I had to go to college. I had to do this and that. And there was really no one in my ear to encourage me or to tell me what to watch out for. So I was just kind of finding myself through these, you know, different, you know, finding myself through these careers and stuff like that. And like you said, ex exploration, um, that's how I was discovered on LinkedIn. And so I decided to give some more time and, you know, connect with some people. And surprisingly, you guys came along, which was weird. Cause I'm, and I, I told both Bo Sean this and I'm like, how'd you guys find me of all people, you know? But um, now seeing it, like I really did need it, so. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. You need supportive networks. And mm -hmm. you can find that in different ways. You can find that from getting a coach, from finding a mentor, and finding someone that you already know that is, you know, successful in doing the things that you are interested in doing and help having this person help you and be your support, be your cheerleader, give you information along the way. Um, that we don't well, have to choose this or that. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. Mm -hmm. You have the opportunity to grow and develop. I don't know how familiar you are of the late Maya Angelou. Yes. But are you familiar with anything in, in, in Maya Angelou's career? Poetry. I mean, that was the number one thing that stood out to me because I had a liking for poetry myself. So Many people think that's right. the only thing that she's done. They think she's just a poet. But if you were to go and look at her, her lifetime, she's had many different careers. She was a streetcar driver in San Francisco. She was a dancer. Mm -hmm. She was a Calypso singer. She was even an activist. She was many different things over the course of her life, over the course of her lifetime. And that's okay. We can evolve and develop. So right now, the main thing is thinking of your first next best step. Your first next best step. So your first next best step could be, I need to get myself stable and I need to do some research on different careers. Mm -hmm. What do you want your next best step to be? I would have to say um, maybe like a product developer for like a body care line, things like that. Creating my own body, you know, body butter, body lotion, and eventually expanding upon that. Okay. So right now, do you know anybody that is doing that? I do not. I do my own research on it. I look for free courses online to study the formulation, how to create it, and the business aspect as well. So I don't have too many support, like I said, um, as far as someone telling me which direction I should go in. It's something I kind of look for myself, or free online on YouTube videos, or from a business aspect, from a professional. So. Okay. So I wish someone had told me this when I was younger, but there was no one to tell me because I didn't have that support. There is formal education, which is going to college, but informal education means finding someone to teach you what it is that you want to do. So if that's what you're interested in and that's what you want to learn about, I'm sure there are people out there that can teach you about that kind of business, that kind of career, how to get into it, how to make money in it. And it's now looking to find those people that can mentor you, coach you, that have training programs on that, Whatever it is that we are interested in, it probably exists out there. So where would you start? Um, with myself, especially. Um, my kind of environment, things like that. Um, I think those have a big factor on whether I should start now or wait a little later until I'm stable enough to have my own space. Because um, the type of environment that I grew up in or always been um, a, you know, it's, it's their way. You know, I'm always focused on other people and 
what would make them happy, but not what would make me feel happy or, you know, and there's no encouragement as far as go for it, you know, or rooting for me. This is so important. And this is the emotional component. This is the mental health component of it. If you're not feeling stable, if you're not feeling supported, if you're not feeling confident in yourself, then means that I have to focus on my personal development so I get to this place of feeling confident in my choices and moving forward. Right. And that I am pursuing the support networks that really can help me to get there. Sometimes we think of career development and business development as just choosing something and it really starts within you. Mm-hmm. How does that sound, Jaquila? It, it sounds really good. It sounds like a fresh breath air to talk to someone who could relate or been in that. Yeah. Um, it feels good to be able to relate with someone after all the years of struggling, whether I should go in this direction, go in that direction, or do what people would like for me to do, or see myself, see them doing, or see them see myself doing, yeah. instead of going with how I felt about it. So. That creates a lot of confusion. Mm-hmm. If I'm, to be honest with you, it's the reason why it took me so long to figure out what I want to do. I kept trying to do what I thought maybe my parents would agree with or what other people would and approve of. And I was looking for validation outside of myself. You have to get to this place where I validate me. Mm -hmm. I have to live this life. I have to show up to this place every day, right? I have Mm -hmm. to pay my bills. So I think you know where you need to start is with making sure that you're secure in your personal growth and your personal development. And then your next step is your exploration. Mm-hmm. And look at it as not like a failure. You know, we, we have to get over this, this relationship with failure where failure is bad. Failure is just information. There's a great book by John Maxwell called Failing Forward. Mm-hmm. And it's all about how do you use failure to project you forward? Sometimes it's just redirecting you. To work out, that means, okay, I'm going to try this way. It's like an experiment, right? Trial one didn't work out. Okay, trial two. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you have a hard time with failure? It gives me anxiety. The word alone gives me anxiety, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It gives a lot of people um, anxiety. No one likes mm-hmm. to fail. They don't like how it feels. But again, that's very emotional. Failure mm-hmm. has been associated with many people with punishment or shame. Right. The timeline, putting things on a timeline, whether I, I need to get things done at this age or have this by this. Mm-hmm. That so, creates failure in my mind, I think, worrying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't need to worry about those things, right? What other people think about my failures is none of my business. And I'm not going to lie to you. I cared about that. I was like, I told everybody I was going to be a lawyer. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's not happening. And I was worried, what are they going to think? And now when I bring that up, people are like, I don't even remember that. You were going to be a lawyer. You wanted to go to law school. They don't even right. remember that. <laughs> I get that a lot. Like I want to be a psychologist. Now I'm in a cake bakery doing something. I'm like, they're like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> how do you go from this to that? <laughs> That's all right. Tell them about Maya Angelou. And she's not the only one. There's so many like that. Are you familiar mm-hmm. with Toni Morrison? People know her as this great author. But they don't know that she was a professor. Leanne LeVandant was an attorney. Now she's fixing people's lives on own. <laughs> so don't worry about what the other people are thinking. This all starts and ends with you. Focus on your personal development. Do your research and start the exploration process. Definitely. Get support. Sometimes you might need to take that money that you are going to pay for a program, like an <laughs> a institution, and pay a coach or pay a, a, somebody that's going to help you and train you in what you want to do. Right. The YouTube videos and the free webinars are great, but they can only take you so far. Got it. Awesome. So you yes. have a bit of a plan, right? 
And I will leave you with this one thing that's very important. Track the journey. Start mm -hmm. taking a career journal and start tracking your journey. Got it. Start writing down your goals and your dreams and the lifestyle that you want. Your ideal lifestyle. Is your ideal lifestyle to travel? Is it to move? All of these things also can influence the career that you choose. Dr. April, how are we yes. doing? I, we're I doing, keep yeah, no, we're doing good. Yes, I'm just like sitting there taking it all in. And right, I'm still thinking. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I definitely agree with you in the sense of um, maybe we're doing some resources and, and researching and support system because that's really um, imperative, even in my own. Um, I was actually an accountant before I became a, a therapist. And um, yeah, and I just volunteered at um, a shelter and then I ended up realizing that I kind of like this field and that's how I into, into this right here. So it's just about through researching and also support system, it's really critical. And I do know that it's really, um, even in today's world, it's hard to trust different people, you know, to ask for help and stuff. However, if the first person says no, you keep going. You just continue to go and go. And you'll find someone definitely to sit in and to help you and stuff. And I love how you put about um, dealing with failures because we have to, failures give us um, an option. Well, that didn't work out. So let me see what I can tweak and move on to something else. Yeah. And it's all a journey. You know, it's all of us have been... Um, how can I say it? When I was going through this, I was a single mom trying to raise a little one. Didn't know how that was gonna gonna happen or work out or whatever. Um, but the sacrifice that I put in myself and improving myself actually end up making her life better. You know, so um, it's okay to invest in yourself. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's important. Yeah, yeah, and. If you have people that don't support you, don't let it get up in your head there. Yeah. You got to keep moving forward. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much. Do you have any further questions for us? I do not. I just want to appreciate you guys for bringing me on, for giving me these advices and guidance. Okay. And yes. Well, keep in touch. Um, definitely with me and let me know how you're doing and if you need any um, mentoring or whatever, I can, I'm definitely um, available to do that, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, definitely. So, um, Seneca, you talked about so much great stuff, um, and now um, we're going to take a short break, and I would like you on this short break to tell us a little bit more about what you do and um, about your services and how people can reach out to you. Hey. So I am a licensed mental health counselor. I'm an online therapist for careerpreneurs and entrepreneurs, and I support them in various mental health disorders, but primarily a lot of anxiety, depression, stress management, and life transitions as it relates to working and developing businesses. So as we talked about earlier, in addition to doing online therapy, I also started an online membership network so that I could work with groups because I realized that there were this influx, right, of women entrepreneurs in the past few years, which you may have seen, Dr. April, and many people may have seen that there's like every other person seems like they're an entrepreneur because there has been a boom in women entrepreneurship. So, you know, I definitely support these women in their emotional transition. And they can find me on social media as Ask Coach Sen. They can find me at SenecaWilliams.com if they're looking to ask any questions about where do they start? What's their first um, move? Sometimes even if I'm not the person that can help you or support you, I will direct you in the right direction. So you can find the person or the place or the thing that you need. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. And um, as you were saying, and when I was here in one time, um, Black women entrepreneurs has been the fastest growing entrepreneurship. Yes. Yes. And so now with everything going on, um, it's really great that you're doing that Concord Network as a support group. Yes. Yeah. So as our listeners are out there listening, and I know our topic is five tips for fulfilling career makeover, 
Yes, let's start about what is number tip one, number one. I can't hear you as much. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just as I was telling uh, Jay Kila, we have to start with assessment. But we think of assessment as traditional assessments, like the uh, personality inventories. And when I say assessment, I'm talking about yourself, right? And we actually kind of just did a, an assessment with Jay Kila where she realized what she needs. She needs support, emotional right. support. She needs, um, you know, information. She needs these things. So it's assessing where you are. Okay. Assessing where you are. So I actually wrote this down to make sure I don't miss anything. So assessment is looking at your skills, your values, your lifestyle, your personality. It's assessing all of these things because they are very important. The next thing is research. So you may need to do some research where you are thinking about what are the career requirements for that specific career? What is the outlook on that career? So many things right now becoming digital, and we have to be careful that the careers that we are choosing, um, we have to see where it's going, not where it is now, but where is it going, and that's how you choose your career. Um, another thing is the career salary, right? So you want to find out what is the medium salary and where does that salary top, you know, what's the top of that salary, what's the high point? Because that's important as you grow, as you get older, you mature, you might feel different about a salary um, at, at 52 than you do at 22. Right. So it's important to look at these projections and see where things are going. Where could you find that information? Hmm? Where could you find that information? So you say can actually go on the Department of Labor. Okay. Um, now there's glassdoor.com that shows you salaries and things like that. But, you know, just USA Department of Labor can show you different careers and it can tell you the outlook for them and the projections. Okay. Yeah. So you can actually start this research on your own or um, depending on where you're located. I know um, I'm in Florida now, but when I was in New York, there was actually a library that was focused on uh, career development and business. So sometimes mm -hmm. if you can't find that place, then you can find um, a section of your library that focuses on careers and businesses because a lot of libraries have that now. Right, right. The other thing is evaluating um, your options. So we're all in different situations and it's very important that we understand that an 18 year old choosing a career that is single with no children is very different from a woman that's 25 and single with children, right? So you might have to look at your options. Can I afford formal education? Do I need formal education for the career change that I, I, am, I want? Sometimes you may not need to go back for a degree. That's why you're going to do that research. You may right. be able to get informal training. You might be able to find someone that can just teach you how to do certain things and give you experience in it. So once you do that research, you'll know, do I have to have a degree to do this thing? Right now, okay. there are many people who are web developers. And right. you might know this, uh, Dr. April, I don't want to ask you your age, but once upon a time, if you were doing websites or anything technical over computers, you have to have a degree. Right, right. Now. Now you don't have to. No, right. So you have to figure out, um, you know, evaluate your options. Do I have to do this or do I have to do that? And then mm -hmm. once you evaluate, then you look at your resume, right? If you're going to start going out there and applying for things, either programs or jobs or internships, look at your resume. Your re resume may need a rebound. And you're going to be looking to see what things you need to update. You're going to see what uh, transferable skills you have, what, what skills come from one thing that you can use in another career. And you're going to want to look at your personal branding. This is something that didn't exist when I was 18 or even 22, right. but it's very important in 2020. Even mm -hmm. career development is your personal brand. Mm -hmm. What sets you apart from these other candidates? What sets you apart from this applicant or that applicant, right? So it's looking at um, if you are a, a web developer, right? Are you a yes. web developer for authors and speakers or are you a web developer for corporate uh, corporations? Are you a web developer for athletes, right? Mm -hmm. so that makes a difference. That's part of your personal brand and it helps you to stand out. And it's something that we weren't taught in high school or even right, college, exactly. at least I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, a resume may revamp. And if you're not skilled in that yourself, then you can take a workshop or a course or hire someone to do your resume for you. Those people mm -hmm. 
resume writers. Then the next thing is um, the exploration, right? So sometimes people think there's a one and done. I'm just going to get this career, get this job, and that's it. But sometimes you might start that track. Like I started, right. uh, I was a paralegal. I was applying for law school. I knew I wanted to be an attorney. But when I was working in these law firms, I realized this is not it. Mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> It just didn't speak to me. It wasn't you. Right. It wasn't me. So what I started doing was volunteering. Mm -hmm. So I went to different places to volunteer. I also interned. Okay. And I also did something called um, informational interviewing. Yes. So I would contact people at various places. Um, I did a lot of networking and I would say, hey, can I have some of your time to talk about um, what you do and, and how you do it? Do you like it? What things did you have to do to get this career? Did you have to get a degree? And mm -hmm. I started doing informational interviewing and it would just kind of like move me along my journey. So if I was going this way and I did these informational interviews and volunteer, I would be able to find out, eh, this is not necessarily the thing I want to continue pursuing. And then I would be able to change tracks. Okay, so assessment, research, evaluate, resume revamp, and exploration. Oh, amazing, awesome. And I definitely agree. And I was just thinking, um, when I did, like you said, it's really good to volunteer because that helped me actually decide on a career. But also doing internship. I did an internship um, at Disney World when I was working because um, I first thought I was going to be a banker. But in dealing working at Disney World, I decided I didn't like to touch money. So all these little things just really, really help and creating and finding a career and that kind of stuff. Um, when you talked about assessing, and I agree with you, it's more than just your skills. It's got to be your value system, what you believe in and stuff. Is there um, a good Thing that you know that's online or something and to help people think well when I'm assessing I don't even know how to assess myself you know what I'm saying I will be honest with you from the way that I work I don't right. use any online assessment okay. although okay. They, they exist right, right. Um, I tell people to go inwards into thinking about what they think is important to them what okay. they think is fulfilling to them okay and I, Tell people to start writing and start journaling. Okay. A lot of my career development happened because I kept a journal. I would write mm. down things that I liked doing, that I enjoy doing, that I, I would set little goals for myself. And that's how I got towards um, where I am now. It really wasn't about an assessment. And I kind of laugh and I'm like, you know, when I think about like these people, like these, you know, big time, like Jeff right. Bezos and Oprah's and all these people, I'm like, you know, I'm sure they didn't take an assessment. They just had something that already they knew about themselves. Right. So you really need to know who you are at the core. And one of the things in my values, why I couldn't be an attorney or work in law is because I'm very into how things affect people. Mm, and okay. being, being a direct, you know, I right. don't know word is, but being directly being able to impact someone's lives. Right. And I remember in law, it was hard for me that, you're using the law to help these people. And sometimes no matter what you do, you can't necessarily help them. Okay. You know, if you're following the letter of the law. Right, definitely. And that was hard for me. And then also representing things I didn't believe in. I right. couldn't do that either. If I didn't believe in something, it would be, it would be an internal conflict for me to okay. represent things that I didn't think was right. You know, that was wrong for me. So right. like, it's looking at yourself. Who are okay. you? You really need and to get to know who you are. Right. And then taking notes about yourself and keeping track of that, which is awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. So another thing that I was just thinking of, um, when we talk about formal education and, and unformal education, some people are leery about formal education because they think they have to take loans out. And it's like, oh my gosh, if I go back to school, you know, I'm not, never going to make it. What are your, your thoughts, even when you have a, a kid? I mean, that, that happened to me. I, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to think about going back to school because I have a little one and this and that. Um, but when I look back on it, it was the best thing that I did for her. Absolutely. It's risky, whatever you do. It's risky mm -hmm. to get a loan and have to pay it back. It's also risky to not invest in your career. Right. 
right? Either way, you know, <laughs> it's risky. Is. Yes. <laughs> so which risk do you want? What I um, encourage people who are actually moms, because I was a single mom at the time and my daughter, she was like two, three years old. Same I here. School, um, I took out loans only for what was necessary. And then I tried to find grants. I tried to right. find scholarships and grants to supplement things. And I only took out loans for what I needed for. So like sometimes people take out loans for books and everything. I took out loans for the coursework, okay. but I tried to pay for books. I got used books. <laughs> I got, um, I think there was a program that just started at the time where you could borrow books and then send them back. Right. Um, so I found different ways to support my, my education. And now I'm not looking back. Like I have no regrets on this. Right. It would have been riskier for me to say, I'm scared and let me not even try. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that um, because I really want to talk about that, that piece of the emotional wellness where sometimes we're afraid to do something, whether it's because um, society has told us we couldn't do it, you know, or a teacher or the educational system or, um, you know, other people in our lives. How do you overcome that, that, oh my gosh, I don't think I can do this. Or, you know, I'm not good enough. You can not smart. therapy. Um, I would have to say, if you're not going to therapy, then you can go to mindset coaching or a, a personal life coach or something like that. Because that mindset piece right there is actually the most important part. Right, exactly. It's the, the part that you need to focus on is the mindset. So you can go to therapy to work through those limiting beliefs, to go from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. You can go to coaching to help you learn how do I set goals? How do I stay motivated? How do I stay accountable? Okay, awesome. And in your practice, you work on the mindset? Primarily, we're working on mindset. So okay. much of what we think and believe, our belief systems and our automatic thoughts, we don't even realize we're conditioned since you we were children. Right, exactly. Yes, yeah. I um, No one may not know this, but um, in my mind, Back in the day, I had a third grade teacher who told me I couldn't read or I wouldn't amount up to anything. So that's what made me choose to go into business because I thought, well, oh, I'm not going to be able to read the psychology books. I'm not going to be able to read anything. Yes. And, and so, yeah, yes. But every step that I go, that little thought comes in, you know, oh my gosh, maybe I'm not going to be able to read it or pronounce it and stuff. But I say to myself, April, you go for it. I, I don't listen to that thought. I just push that behind me and just move forward. You know, you have to step out in faith. So yes, yes. I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. I know um, it's a little bit challenging for you because of all the stuff that you're going through. You're an amazing, amazing person. And I really, really do appreciate not only what um, resources you have provided for me and for my guests, but also for all the resources that I see out on LinkedIn. Um, I didn't mention LinkedIn in, in all this, but um, it's a great avenue if you're looking for um, a career and looking for connecting, but also um, hooking up with you, with her on LinkedIn. And what's your LinkedIn? It's X. Well, if you want to find me on social media, on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, ask Coach Sen. Okay, Axe Coaching, thank you so much for being on the show and providing so much information. I really do appreciate you. Thank and you so much, Dr. April. It's been my pleasure knowing you and being able to participate. All right, thank you again. And this has been the Bringing Intimacy Back show. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>